So as I'm sure many of you are aware, Skyrim recently got a large update adding paid mods, some fixes and general miscellaneous changes. Now much of the conversation around this update is obviously about the paid mods, and whether it's good or bad or whatever, there's plenty of talk about it. But that's not what I want to talk about with this video, as there's a bunch of changes under the hood that have made updating certain mods and mod lists a huge headache, and I want to look at why this update in particular is causing such a problem. Because while they're certainly less frequent than they used to be, many of us are used to a new Skyrim update dropping, and many mods being broken for a week or two before all is up to date again. Yet with this update, many of Skyrim's biggest and most popular mods are taking way longer to work. And as a channel who covers mod lists, more mod list videos are coming soon, trust me, I've certainly noticed how numerous lists are still not working, and many of the most popular authors have made a statement saying their list will be down for a long while, and some are even contemplating no longer supporting the Steam version. So I've done my research into what exactly is the problem with this update, just so we can all get a better understanding of modders frustrations, and why some are straight up giving up on Skyrim. And while there's a lot of technical stuff, I'll try word things as simply as possible so it's not too confusing. I'm not a mod author or anything like that myself, so I've got an input from Ulthro, creator of the AVO mod list, and used the model for Skeever's very helpful Reddit post. So, the first big problem with modding is the Skyrim Downgrader. This tool basically reverts Skyrim back to a previous version and is vital for many who mod Skyrim. As an example of when you might use this, you could have a good modded Skyrim playthrough going when suddenly Steam updates, and oh no, it no longer works. But with the downgrader, you can simply go back to a previous version of Skyrim, and voila, it's all working again. And this downgrader is also used for a ton of mod lists, as many use mods which ignore or conflict with Skyrim's Anniversary Edition content that was added a couple of years ago. So to avoid breaking stuff, the downgrader turns your Skyrim into a previous version where the Anniversary Edition content is ignored. However, with this latest update, the downgrader seems to be encountering some problems, it has a new version that's up and running, but people are finding repeatable crashes in areas around Solitude and Dawnstar, and a lot of people seem stumped as to what's causing them, especially as there's no crash logs showing off what went wrong. And so naturally, many list authors are reluctant to use it, knowing that a flood of users will start asking why their game is crashing in certain areas. Next we have problems with arguably the most popular mod, Sky UI. Like the downgrader, it can be used, but there's a plethora of bugs being reported, from difficulty in survival settings disappearing, to the game freezing and much more. And the reason for this is where Bethesda's laziness starts becoming more apparent. So I'll try and keep it simple. Skyrim uses Adobe Flash.swf files, which are used for menus and general user interface stuff. So as you can see here, there's an SWF file for the barter menu, the crafting menu, general message boxes, the credits, and just a lot of UI bits that aren't actually in the 3D game world. And so, when Bethesda created a new menu for this paid mod system, you'd assume they'd create a new .swf file, or update an existing one, and all would be fine as it's in its own isolated place. And this is where I'm going to really simplify things, so those who are more tech savvy please forgive me, but basically there's a bunch of code which is used to let Skyrim communicate with Adobe Flash, so the UI stuff can be displayed in game. But Bethesda, in their infinite wisdom, simply took the code for this new paid mod menu and dropped it in the middle of this existing code. Now if you've ever done any coding, you know that the moment stuff is shifted about, it can cause a huge headache of problems. One of which being that Sky UI and a number of UI mods now have difficulty finding slash editing this code it's been using for years at this point. Again, that's very much a simplification, but I want those like me who are useless with technical stuff to understand. Another strange problem is that this update no longer has Steam DRM, which is really weird and will probably get updated back. It's basically what ties Skyrim to a specific platform, in this case Steam. It's why most games purchased from other sites will tell you this game can only be redeemed on Steam. But without this DRM, achievements just no longer work. And a side effect of this, other than just being annoying, is that the very popular and useful Engine Fixes mod now has issues as one of the things it fixes is allowing achievements with mods. But now there's no achievements to fix, it causes some confusion and creates a domino effect where other stuff now fails to load, and it's just a mess. Next there's changes made to ESL files, and it's just yet another headache that mod authors have to get around, and again, I'll try explain it in simple terms. So the vast majority of mods used to be marked as a .esp plugin file, 
and there's only so many of these plugins that Skyrim's engine will allow. But a couple of years ago, Bethesda introduced .esl files, and basically smaller mods can use this file type and it doesn't go towards that ESP file limit. In other words, you can have more mods installed at once. Now this new update made it so even larger mods can be marked as an ESL file, which is actually a good thing, as again it means more larger mods can be installed at once. However, these ESL files all have an ID attached to them, and with this update that ID changed, and so any new mods made through the creation kit will use this new ID. The problem is that the older versions of Skyrim don't recognise this ID, and they simply won't work, and so it means new mods can't be used on older versions of Skyrim, including Skyrim VR, as that didn't get this new update. Now a mod has now been released to make this ID work with different versions of Skyrim, but it's just yet another requirement for making a working mod list. I could go on and on, with stuff like mods that are marked as a DLL plugin not working, and Creation Club content getting a new version number, which prevents previous Skyrim versions from recognising it, and so on. And the thing is, each of these problems in a vacuum are annoying but can be dealt with, but all these problems together is creating such a headache for mod and mod list authors, and many just feel done with dealing with it. Many lists are just fed up with working around Creation Club content, and I've seen authors decide to use the GOG version instead, as it allows for much easier control over which version of Skyrim is used. But that about sums it up. Updates have always been annoying enough for the modern community, yet this one in particular is bringing more problems than usual. And unlike the Anniversary Edition update a couple years ago, this update doesn't bring enough positive changes to make the headaches seem worth it. Hopefully I got this video right, but feel free to correct anything if I made a mistake. And like, I don't want to dramatise things, it's not the end of Skyrim modding. It will continue to be as popular as it still is. But it's clear that Bethesda only care about this new paid mod system, and with each of these new updates it makes casual modding more difficult, and with the more difficulty means there'll be less people willing to try it, and yeah. A lot of frustration going around and I hope you recognise why now. But uh, thank you for watching, and a huge thank you to Ultro and Skeever for sharing their wisdom on this matter. And if you want to keep up to date with general modding stuff, uh, you know, click the subscribe button and the bell, and whatever YouTube wants you to press nowadays. And as always, a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters, Bishop Fox, Connor Peterson, Esteban, John Ratz, Ter Aura, Jaden Shaw, Jake Carlo, Dweezil Peepants, Rook, Alec Bentley, Jack Ma, and Christian Howell. Thank you so much, and as I said, more modless videos will be coming. In fact, I had one in the works, but then this Skyrim update happened, and so that's been delayed. But yeah, I'm working on it. Thank you all, and farewell.